And I want to talk about Islam for a moment because I think we are wise to be concerned about it. As you know, I'm concerned about religion in general, but I think we're wise to differentiate specific religious beliefs. Uh, <clears throat> and we are, I think, quite encumbered by political correctness and just frank confusion on this front. Uh, one problem is that we have this one word, religion, which names this truly diverse spectrum of, of fascinations and uh, ideological commitments. And re religion is, is a nearly useless term. It's a term like sports. Now, there are sports like badminton, and there are sports like, like tie boxing. Okay, and they have almost nothing in common apart from breathing. Right, there, there are sports that are just synonymous with the risk of physical injury or even death. I mean, there are sports that are just synonymous with violence. Now, if you get injured playing badminton, you're just embarrassed. <laughs> we're, we're facing a problem at this moment. There, there, is, there is, I'm happy to say, a religion of peace in this world, but it's not Islam. To call Islam a religion of peace, as we hear ceaselessly reiterated, is completely delusional. Now, Jainism actually is a religion of peace. Jainism is a, that the core principle of Jainism is nonviolence. Gandhi got his nonviolence from the Jains. The crazier you get as a Jain, the less we have to worry about you. It is. <laughs> this is. I mean, Jane extremists are are actually they are they are paralyzed by their pacifism. <laughs> Jane extremists just they they can't take their eyes off the ground when they walk lest they step on an ant. They filter every sip of water through cheesecloth lest they. Sw swallow and thereby kill a bug. I mean, needless to say, they're, they're vegetarian. So the problem, notice, the problem is not religious extremism, okay, because extremism is not a problem if your core beliefs are truly nonviolent. The problem isn't fundamentalism. Which we often hear this said. These are euphemisms. I mean, the, the only problem with Islamic fundamentalism are the fundamentals of Islam. Now we have Mullah Omar and Osama bin Laden and Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. These guys agree about the nature of reality and how to live within it. And the problem is they are giving a very plausible version of the faith. These are, Osama bin Laden is not the Reverend Jim Jones of the Muslim world. It would be wonderful if he were, but the problem is he is giving an, a, a truly straightforward version of Islam, and you really have to be an acrobat to figure out how he's distorting the faith. Now, if, he were, if these guys were Jains, or Buddhists, or Amish, or Quakers, it would be, it would be patently obvious how they were distorting their religion. I mean, the, the, in fact, their behavior would be unintelligible. Okay, it is not obvious by the light of Islam, and that, this is just a fact we have to speak honestly about. And no one should be speaking more honestly about this and more volubly about this than moderate Muslims. Moderate Muslims have to find some way to grapple with this fact. But to, but to say that Osama bin Laden is David Koresh, is just a lie, and, and it's, it's, uh, it's a dangerous lie at this point. Now, I just want to rehearse for you what, what their, these core beliefs are and what they entail. The belief is that Muhammad got the Quran directly from the Archangel Gabriel in his cave in the seventh century. And it is the perfect word, therefore, of the creator of the universe. <clears throat> I apologize for the cartoonish nature of this image of Muhammad, but Quality images are difficult to come by at the moment. <laughs> now, the, the consequence is we have this single book, which is 
imagined to be the best book on any subject ever written, never to be superseded by any human effort at any point in the future. Now this is a problem because this is a profoundly mediocre book. <laughs> okay. it, it, is, it is dangerous to say this. It is suicidal to say this as a Muslim. It is true. And we have to grapple with this fact. And, the, and, and the, the idea that this is the best book ever written on any subject can only be maintained in a kind of fantastical intellectual isolation. Um, and this, this isolation has actually been achieved in the Arab world to an astonishing degree. Some of you probably have heard this fact, but the country of Spain translates more of the world's literature and learning into Spanish every year than the entire Arab world has translated into Arabic since the ninth century. Okay, that, that's scary. It's scary given that this con the contents of this book really offers precious little rationale for living in a sane and pluralistic global civilization. What it does give you a rationale for is ceaselessly worshiping the perfect being who has given you this mediocre book. And this is, this is a photo of, of Muslims in Kashmir worshiping at a shrine believed to contain a single beard hair from the Prophet Muhammad. Now, in showing you this image, I don't actually mean to denigrate the, the, the positive emotions that can be associated with this kind of practice. I mean, I think devotion is a, is a positive emotion uh, that we want in our lives. Uh, and I certainly don't mean to make light of how difficult life undoubtedly is for Muslims in Kashmir. But it seems to me patently obvious, given the challenges that they face and that we all face in, in creating a world worth living in, these people have something more important to do than worship the beard hair of a man who may well have been a, a schizophrenic. 